Hi everyone, it's Lara. Thank you so much for watching. With today's video I'm starting a new series in which I will show you how I made my new winter coat. I wasn't actually originally planning on filming this because making a coat is already such a big project. It took me six afternoons to finish my coat. But then I thought it might be helpful for some of you. Some of you might be still interested how to make a coat, so I've filmed it anyway. So in today's video I will show you what pattern I have used and what changes were necessary to the pattern so that the coat would turn out the way I want it to. And I will start working on the front part. So if you want to know how I have done that then please keep watching and also make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any further parts. And now let's get into this. This is the pattern that I have used for my coat with a few changes. This is a pattern I found in a Burda magazine. Uh, it was from October 2005, so it is quite old, 11 years old to be exact. And I wasn't able to find this exact pattern online, but if you find anything that resembles this one, that would work. Here is a picture of all the pattern pieces for the code as it is in the magazine. And I have highlighted those parts where I made changes. So normally um, the green part here would be instead of interfacing, it would be just folded inwards. So I didn't use this. I only used the space that is not highlighted. Then also here is a pattern for the color and for the small piece beneath the color. I didn't need that because I made a different type of color. And then also the pocket is here placed in the middle of the front piece. I made it on the side. And then I will show you my own sketch um, in order to explain what other changes I have made. So instead of having a color that lies flat on the coat, I have decided to have a stand-up color that also protects my neck from the cold. And this would be the shape that I needed to make for my color. I had to measure um, how big the color is supposed to be by measuring the front part here and then also the back, and that gave me the exact measurements. Then I have decided that I will have a hood, so um, you can just look online and find any pattern for a hood that is supposed to be on a coat, and if you find something that you like, you can use that. I had a jacket at home where I could copy the hood, so I came out uh, with two pieces that look like this. There is going to be flaps in the front so that I can close them when it's really cold and um, I will have to have two pieces like this and one middle piece. And then there is the change with the pockets. So there's going to be inside pockets um, here in the side seam. There's also going to be a belt. And um, in the front I will close the coat with a zipper and I will have two flaps. One is going to be on the top covering the zipper and one is going to be on the bottom protecting my clothes from the zipper so that the zip, uh, zipper couldn't get tangled. So this is the changes that I have made. And now I will show you the pieces for the front part and I will explain everything also in detail. By the way, when I was making my pattern for the color, I used this guide uh, because it's nicely rounded and that allowed me to make a nice shape. I think I've started somewhere here. That was then the back middle of the color and then I copied this line and I just went as far as I needed to. And then I had the half for the pattern of my color and I could use that. I have laid out all the pieces made of velvet for the front part of my coat. On the left side they are put on the floor separately and on the right side I kind of assembled them so that even beginners can understand where all those separate pieces are supposed to go. And now we are going to have a closer look at them. The first steps for the front part are pinning together the bottom pieces of the front part of the coat and sewing them together. Uh, then pinning together the blends for the inside pockets and then turning them to the good sides. And this is where we are going to continue with the front part. Here we have the lining for the front part of the coat. The first thing we can see is that the middle piece 
has parts made of velvet. The reason for it is that when you open your coat, you don't want everyone to immediately see the lining. So this is a common practice that part of the piece that is in the middle is always made of the same fabric that is on the top. It just looks prettier. I have ironed on interfacing on the velvet parts. I didn't have to do that on the other fabric and yeah you can obviously see that the right pieces aren't even pinned together. On the left side I have sewn those long pieces together and this is only pinned on but it should make it easier to understand how it's going to look once it's done. So here are no pockets, no details so this is definitely much easier than the velvet front part. Before we continue I have two tips for a happy seamstress. Tip number one is drink lots of water. Make sure that you drink each hour at least one big glass of water. This is not a reminder just for you, this is also for me. I keep forgetting that sometimes because once I start a sewing project I'm always so excited and I want to finish as fast as possible and then at the end of the day when I think back I think like I didn't drink enough. So definitely make sure each hour drink at least a big cup of water. Maybe set an alarm, make a reminder somewhere. It is really really good you're gonna have more energy and believe me everything's gonna be easier if you hydrate it and the second tip is if you are a beginner and this seems so far overwhelming do not worry maybe try to picture it as a project that has separate milestones or maybe even that that would be more projects not just one it is a lot of details but other than that, there is nothing really special, you don't need any special skills, so I just wanted to tell you that you can do that. And now let's continue. I skipped the steps where I would sew the main parts together because I think those are kind of obvious and I didn't want uh, the video to be extra long. So let's have a look now at the pocket parts. Um, I have to pin the velvet part for the pocket to the upper piece like this. So it is facing upwards. What I see here is the bad side and the good side of the velvet is facing the good side of the upper part. Um, I marked here where the pocket piece is supposed to go. And I've done basically the same on the bottom. So you can see that they are kind of facing away from each other, the pockets. Once I turn them in, they are going to be overlapping, so don't worry, it just looks weird. Now I'm going to position the blend to the top piece. I'm going to position it in the middle here. Make sure that these distances are equal. And then I will put the pocket piece over it and this is how I'm going to pin all those things together. And then I have to sew here through, here and here. And this is how it's going to look like once it's done. So here the bottom piece made of lining and here when I fold it down you can see clearly this is the velvet piece for the pocket and here is the blend. I hope you can see something. I'm going to go a little bit closer with the light because um, the velvet is so dark it's sometimes really difficult to see. Yeah, so for now I'm going to leave uh, the pieces as they have been sewn on, so I'm not going to turn anything down. But I'm going to put this upper piece on the bottom one. And I'm going to pin them together. And there, there's the space where the pocket ends, and this is where we'll st start sewing them together to the edge. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So first we'll pin them together. Um, I always like to keep the pins at right angles. I know I keep repeating it in my videos, but this is really super important, especially when you're sewing fabrics like velvet, because then they will stay in place and um, you will make sure that you work precise. So, and now I will go back to my sewing machine and I will sew those ends together and I will also finish this piece and then we will continue. So now I have sewn those ends together and the next step is to take the pocket pieces and to turn them inwards. That's why it's important that you sew only to the 
a place where the pocket starts, otherwise you wouldn't be able to turn them in. So I turned them in. So from the good side, all you will be able to see now is, um, is the blend. And from the other side, there is the pockets. And what I want to do now is to saw those uh, sides together. So I'm basically just gonna pin this together like that. And then I will sew um, all three sides together with a straight stitch. And that's gonna be it for the inside pockets at the breast area. I'm going to show you how it looks like when it's done. So once it's done, then this is already sewn together. So when you turn it, you see already only the blend. And once you fold it nicely and uh, press it then over a piece of fabric or just press it from the other side, it's going to look really pretty. What I like also to do is I put a pin here once I adjusted this line and then I will make a few hand stitches here so that the fabric would stay in place because um, I don't want to saw through that would kind of destroy the velvet optic and that's not what I want and the next thing you want is that the end of the pocket uh, is facing upwards because then it will be flatter and it will look much nicer so that's it for the inside pockets now here I have the both front parts um, that I have just sewn together in the middle. That might sound crazy, but this is super important if you wanna put in a zipper and you want to make sure that both sides are equal. And I'm going to show you how I will pin the zipper on. Once I have sewn the left and the right piece together with a really loose uh, straight stitch, I have turned it to the bad side and then I have ironed here the fabric in the middle um, to the side so that it would lay flat. Now I have here in the middle a straight line which is going to be the guide for my zipper and I have here my zipper which I will put um, on the line in the middle and I will pin it like this in place. The most important thing is that the good side of the zipper should face the fabric so you see the bad side of the zipper here on the top. So I'm going to pin it in place and then we will continue. So first I have pinned the zipper from the bad side, then I have turned the front part for my coat to the good side and I have pinned it again and then I have removed the pins from the other side because what I want to achieve is that I would sew equally far on both sides, um, you know, so that there would be a beautiful straight line, even though there is going to be blend over it, but I really want it to be perfect. So now the next step is to go to my sewing machine and I will sew the zipper in with a regular straight stitch. And then I will uh, cut open the stitches in the middle and then we will do the next step. One thing I definitely recommend and that would be pin your uh, inside pocket somewhere upwards or to the side so that you couldn't accidentally saw through them. And also you will need a zipper foot so that you can get closer to the metal part of the zipper. This is how my zipper foot looks like. Um, it is more narrow and because it's not as wide as the regular sewing foot then it lo uh, allows you to approach the middle part as I have already mentioned. So I'm just gonna put it in my sewing machine and then I will start sewing the zipper on. Uh, I will start on the left side and um, the only thing is the upper part is sometimes very difficult to get in. I like actually sewing this piece on once I open the stitches in the middle so I will start a little bit below so let's say like here yeah that's good and um, I go actually as close as possible to the metal part and then I will keep the same distance from the middle and I will keep sewing um, I set my stitch a little bit longer because this is quite thick now and I don't want to break the needle. Yeah, 
and I will continue doing this until I have sewn the entire zipper on. I finished one side and then I put the zipper throat uh, to the next side so you can click the, um, the sewing foot either here on or here and then you can sew either having the zipper on the left or right side. So right now I had the zipper on the left side so now I'm going to put it to the rightest position so that I can sew with the zipper on the right side. I hope that makes sense because it sounds kind of weird but I think you kind of know what I'm saying and the next thing you will have to do is to adjust the needle probably because sometimes um, when you switch to the other side then the needle would hit the middle and you don't want that so this is very important to check that before you start sewing otherwise your needle would break so and now here we go same procedure so the zipper has been sewn in on both sides and now I will start opening the stitches in the middle and then removing the rests of the thread. This is quite a lot of work but I mostly uh, listen to some chatty video on YouTube or to music or uh, to some audiobook. So By now I have opened uh, the stitches in the middle. I have removed as much thread as possible. There is still left. I'm gonna do that later. So now the zipper has been sewn in and it is nicely flat. Uh, this zipper goes, uh, goes both ways. That's what I like when I make a coat or a jacket. I think they're really practical. So I'm gonna close it all the way up and then yeah, I could basically open it from the bottom as well. So uh, the next step will be the blends. I hope it works as I planned it because that was not um, in the pattern. I have sewn the bottom end of the blend together, then I have turned it to the good side again and I basically only um, sewn through um, on the entire length with a zigzag. So this is the white blend that goes here. I'm going to pin it, the zigzag facing the zipper about half an inch further. Then I'm going to sew it on and then I'm going to fold it over. Maybe I have to go a little bit closer, yeah, that's better. I'm gonna go a bit closer, like not even quarter an inch, and then when I fold it over, it's going to cover the entire zipper. Yeah, that looks better. So this is the blend for this one. On the other side, I have put the blend underneath the zipper. And hello puppy, Hercules <laughs> came to visit us. And I will just pin it all the way uh, down. And then I have to sew it on and where I have already sewn the zipper on, this is where I will also sew through. So I will basically just copy the seam. There I will have to work really precise. Okay, now the piece is pinned here in place. So is it on the other side and now I go to my sewing machine. I will use just regular straight stitch and sew those things in place and before I turn this over and sew it again through I will show you how it looks. Okay, um, when I open the zipper then you can see that this has been sewn on already. This is perfect because then really anything you wear underneath your jacket is protected. It can get tangled in the zipper. And this is how the other blend looks like. I keep saying blend. I hope that's the right word. Maybe I should call it like a flap, I don't know. Maybe write me in the comments what you would call that. So I have sewn it in here, a little bit further from the seam. And now I just fold it over. And then I have to make sure that I would sew it only as far as the seam is, not closer, otherwise I could damage uh, my needle. And that's about it. This is going to be the last step for now, for the front part. So if you came so far, then you have practically the worst part behind you. 
that's it for today we are going to continue with the next video so if you don't want to miss any further parts make sure you subscribe to my channel just hit the button above me or the button down below you can also follow me on instagram uh, my instagram link is listed down below in the description box and if you like today's tutorial don't forget to give it a thumb up thank you so much for watching i'm looking forward to seeing you with the next part bye